Rendezvous with Ray. It was a unique friendship that developed between a French-Canadian priest and one of the world's greatest film directors and had a singular impact on Bengali films both academically and practically. It was en route to India in 1961, at a stopover in New York, that 26-year-old F.R. Gaston Roberger was acquainted with the works of Satyajit Ray. Through the Apu trilogy, he found the world of Apu so fascinating that he saw all three films in one sitting and there began his long-standing love affair with the people of India and Bengali cinema and culture, which led to path-breaking work in those fields. In his latest book, Satyajit Ray, Essays 1970-2005, a compilation of his essays as the name suggests, being published by Manohar Publishers, New Delhi, Roberger provides a scholarly, original analysis of Ray's works, giving an insight into the greatness of Ray both as a person and as an artist. The Apu Trilogy was, in fact, my first portal to West Bengal and its people, he told. Frontline, in his youth, all he knew of Bengal was through Michelle Yates and Louis Bengali, some of Tagore's poems, and a Reader's Digest article on Mother Teresa. If the harsh image of poverty brought out by the article on the Saint of the Slums haunted him, Apu's world came as a reassurance. No, Apu, Sabaja, even Hari Har did not need my help but how not to love them. I thought it was fortunate that I would soon be among them, he wrote. Roberger does not endorse the accusation of raised detractors that the master director made his reputation selling India's poverty to the West. What struck me most was not the material poverty depicted in the films, but the enormous spiritual poverty of some rich people is much more deplorable than material poverty, he said. Roberger does not speak with the arrogance of the West. I was here on a quest to know the world and in the process know myself. I did not come here to convert. In fact, I'm the one who got converted, he said. But it took him nine years after reaching Calcutta, now Kolkata and joining Street, Xavier's college, to muster up the confidence to meet Ray in person. Although I wanted to meet him right away, I didn't want to just go and see him like he was a living museum piece. I wanted to prepare myself, get to know his works more, so that when we met there could be a worthwhile dialogue, he said. When they finally met, it was the beginning of a close. Friendship that lasted 22 years until Ray's death in 1992. It was a very quiet friendship that developed over the years. Manakda, as Ray was affectionately called by his friends, was a shy person and always very discreet about displaying his emotions, said Roberger. Though to outsiders, Ray's massive stature, physical and intellectual, might have made him come across as cold, aloof, and even intimidating, he was. In reality a very simple and unassuming man with a subtle sense of humor. It was an unspoken arrangement between the two of them to meet on Sundays at 9 a.m. at Ray's residence on Bishop Lefroy Road, Kolkata. Ray would invite Roe Berger over for private screenings of his latest films and welcomed comments on them. But this happened only after the friendship had cemented. For in the early days of their dialogue Ray's shyness prevented him from talking about his own films. He was even shy of receiving compliments, said Roberger. To Roberger, the greatest mark of Ray's appreciation for him was that he often addressed the French-speaking priest in Bengali, in spite of my lack of elegance in that language and the fact that Ray knew both English and Bengali so well. Ray's screenplay manuscripts were an art by themselves, Roberger says, handwritten in Bengali, with notes in English for his set designer, with sketches here and there, and occasional staff notation of fragments of music. One Sunday morning, Roberger found Ray in a disturbed mood. A few well-known personalities of the city had visited him earlier to go through some of his manuscripts. After they left, Ray found the charulet a screenplay missing. Ray was almost sure who the culprit was. I asked him whether he was planning to take any action and he said no and explained to me that he did not want to hurt the reputation of the person. I was absolutely stunned by his humane concern, said Roberger. Like Rabindranath Tagore, a race wrote his time like a colossus. Roberger writes it, is as if all Bengal was in Manakda, the rich and the poor, the powerful and the humble, the peasants and the city persons, children, teenagers, adults and old people, men and women. Philosophically too, Roberger feels, Ray took off where Tagore signed out. If one 
compares the last major prose piece by Tagore, Shabhaya Tar Sankat, Crisis of Civilization, which he wrote at the beginning of the Second World War, which contains his immortal dictum that in spite of what was happening it would be a sin to lose faith in man and the last three films of Raghana Shatru, Shaka, Prashaka and Agantukli. Analogy becomes clear, in these three films Ray was at his most personal and when some critics saw the films as didactic and the both he felt deeply hurt, for in these last films Satyajit was directly talking to us, conveying his personal message on society and civilization. If the impulse that motivated his earlier films was aesthetics in the last three it was self-expression, and there we were denying him his right to speak. As the saying goes, no one is a prophet in his own country, said Roberger, an agnostic throughout his life. It is possible, Roberger feels, that in the face of death Ray was searching for an answer. This was suggested by some of the music that he used in Shaka, Prashaka. The last time the two friends met, Ray was in hospital on his deathbed. It was a Sunday and Roberger, true to habit, arrived on the dot at 9 a.m. He had grown so weak that he looked frail as a child. I did not stay long and as I was leaving, Manakdar said, Barlow lagged low. It was nice. Those were his last words to me, said Roberger. One important fallout of this friendship was the establishment of Chaitrabhan IA, Communication and Film Institute, the first of its kind in West Bengal, which Roberger founded in 1970 and to which Ray, as a token of friendship, lent his name as co-founder. Ray was in the first governing body and after a few terms readily agreed to be the institute's advisor. Roberger arranged most of the initial funding from Canadian agencies. I had no reservations applying for them, for I feel richer countries in the West are indebted to countries like India, he said. For 26 years Roberger was the director of Chaitrabhan and under him the institute not only produced important documentary features but also became reading ground for local talent for filmmaking.